What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's the Curtis of Violation Podcast. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, before we even get started, I want to say our thoughts go out to everybody that's been affected by the hurricane and the flooding. Helene. Yeah, Helene. But Bitch. it's Yeah, she, she's a cunt, so sure. she's uh, she's really screwed up a lot all the way from Florida to Carolina and just it's yeah. It's a mess. Uh, Companies, got, homes, disc off courses. Yeah. Just everything. It's yeah. a it's a fucking mess. Yeah, it's a bummer. That uh, uh that really took me by surprise too. I mean bad. like like I knew it was gonna be rough and I saw that or I didn't know it was gonna be rough. I saw where people were posting like there's always people on Facebook that's like, Oh, they're blowing it out of proportion. It's not yeah. gonna be that bad. It's pretty fucking bad. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it was real bad, and a lot of it, you know, kind of local to us, like yeah. a little east of us, you know, eastern Tennessee, northeast Tennessee, western Carolina. Um, yeah. It's a big mess, and uh, our thoughts go out to you. And if for some reason you can, and I'll try to remember to throw some links in. I'm sure there's plenty of places taking monetary donations, or <clears throat> if you're local, there's places in um, White Pine that are accepting water donations. There's, I mean, there's. People going without drinking water. There's they yeah. said just uh, the eastern Tennessee part that's damaged and feeling the effects of it. They they need thirty thousand cases of water every three days, so ten thousand cases of water a, a day okay. just to keep people in drinking water. So oh man. So yeah, it's it's huge. And then like I said, there's a you know uh, just off the top of my head, second harvest, um, Tennessee neighbors. There's there's a lot of a lot of good people doing a lot of good work, so uh, I'll try to remember to put some links in the description. But if you can, go help them. If you, yeah. if this was the month you were going to plan on contributing to this podcast, don't give it to us. Give no. it, give it to the people that need it. So, yeah. just uh, this thoughts go out to them. I don't want to bum us out too long, sure. but but then afterwards, like and subscribe. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely like and subscribe and comment. Yeah, I mean, you know, guys, all the good shit. Get the word out there. I mean, just get your friends watching this stuff. It's good. Come yeah, on. Yeah, it's it's entertainment. Yeah, it's you, better than getting hit by a damn hurricane. It's so much. <laughs> listening to this podcast is way better than being in a hurricane. And we do have a lot of listeners in the Western North Carolina that I know of that I'm in communication with and stuff, and hopefully. The podcast will give them a little bit of, you know, comic relief from I the hope. shit that they're going through right now. But yeah. that's a and some information. Yeah, you know what they need in a time like this? <laughs> news for disc disc golf news. Wrong information <laughs> from two <laughs> dummies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, what well, this MV, MVP Open we've been talking about for the last what couple of months. Both of us have said. Four rounds at one course is too much. Yeah. It's not. A lot. Not, not at Maple Hill. I don't agree with it. Give me five. Yeah. Give me fucking six, maybe. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's it's by far the best tournament of the year, in my eyes. Yeah. It's just... It sounds almost like we're just jumping on whatever bandwagon. As soon as... Whatever tournament happens, we're just like, yeah, yeah, even though we said <laughs> no a while back. But, like, this was one that I called you afterwards, and I was like, dude... This is my favorite tournament to watch. Maple Hill is my favorite tournament. And you're like, yeah, I don't even care that it's four rounds because it's at that course. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, me either. I mean, they changed a few pin positions, like nine and... Four, yeah. Not 14. But, but I mean, it, they don't change that much. And four rounds is fine at Maple Hill. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely fine. Definitely. It was beautiful. And I think it also has a lot to do with, like, this is like the beginning of fall, so the leaves are awesome. It's just the scenery is great. I don't know. It's Maple Hill. Yeah, it's, it's its a, own thing. Yeah, it's it's just it's such a it's well, it's the number one course in the world, right? Sure, it still is, right? Uh, I don't know. Well, it's the number one in the United States. Yeah, no. we know that, and it it plays like it, dude. It's uh, it's just a great course. Yeah. Did, what did you think about the, while we're talking about the course? What did you think about Nine's new Part Five location? Um, I didn't care. Now, did they have that tunnel from the the alternate tee pad that they played from? Well, they only played from one T-pad, but there's an uh, there's another T-pad that the FPO played yeah. from. That's their it's old way shorter, pin yeah. position or uh, T position. Now, w is that what they played last year? I'm not sure I because yeah, I thought I thought it was the same T-pad. I thought it was just a different basket. Right. No, they changed that at some point. I don't know if it was just last year. I'm pretty sure it was changed last year too. Anyways, I don't love the par five. You don't pin. I just saw too many players 
once they did get to the top of the hill, it was usually like faded off into the right or left, and they just had to pitch out 50 to 100 feet to take their whatever third shot. Yeah. And I was, I don't know. I don't like watching disc golf where it's just like you have to watch a guy pitch out to, for placement. Yeah. And there was a lot of that, I felt like, but looked really hard. <laughs> yeah. Looked incredibly hard. Yeah, it was tough. Um, it, I didn't. I'm not gonna say I didn't like it, but it does suck that they do have to just kind of pitch out to get their upshot yeah. to get to two of their upshot. The best players in the world were having to do that. So, and it's not. It shouldn't. Every it shouldn't be easy. Sure. I mean, but uh, uh, there's a lot of holes on this course that aren't easy. So, yeah. I mean, it, but I don't. I don't. I didn't mind it. But when I first saw it and I saw Ezra and Goofs play it, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I fucking love this. And yeah. then after four rounds, I was like. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, well, the two rounds they played the first. Oh yeah, two yeah, there. that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, I liked it when they played to the old pin. I love that pin position. Yeah, yeah. right there on the almost island. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, the, the tournament was great. FPO came down to the very you know very end. The MPO came down to the fucking very end. So it, I mean, it it may have been one of the best tournaments to watch all year too. And I don't know if it's just because a lot of it's. You know, it's like the last, so it's kind of bittersweet. It's kind of amped it up. But, dude, coming down to the wire for both FPO and MPO, I, my heart was racing through both oh, rounds. Yeah. I watched both of the final rounds. I watched almost every round, by the way. Yeah. But I was like, oh, my God. I had a lot of the, you know how the fans, <laughs> where they put their hands on the back of their head whenever someone makes a mistake? What? It was a sad lot of that. Sad Cobras. Sad Cobras. Yeah, that's what they call it. Called. Sad Cobras, yeah. There's a lot of sad cobra <laughs> Um, yeah, from FPO and MPO. Missy Gannon taking it home, dude. Big money miss. Big money miss. And then she also won the, the points thing. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, she had two trophies. Two trophies. Yeah, two trophies, dude. She had a wood plaque and a cup. Yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, it was uh, weird seeing Kristen choke, but yeah. I mean, it's not the first time we've seen it. No, no. And I mean, not at all. Especially but. the last uh, couple months, she hasn't really been, ever since she came back from her injury. Yeah, it, but you expect her to hit that shot, like absolutely. You know, you, you see them both lay up, and you think that she's got it. You know what I mean? You yeah. think she has it, but she didn't. She no. didn't have it. Dude. She she, did. uh, she, she didn't. blew it up a shot. So. She didn't, and I would argue that like even a lot of her putts and stuff throughout all four rounds, there was a lot of them like, oh, dude, she makes those. She used to make those a lot more. She was hitting the right side a lot, a lot. Yes, yes, a lot. And there was, was a lot of them. That, I mean, if it was me, I would have been like, nah, that could have stayed in. You yeah, know what sure, I mean? But sure. I guess you expect more of the pros. You expect them to hit dead center. But, yeah. yeah, there was a lot of them that were just on the edge of the right, and they just didn't hang on. She had a lot of a lot of them teeter-totter and then fall out, you know? But, mm -hmm. yeah, she was off just a little. She needs to know? aim further to the left. Yeah. That's how you get them in. And I wonder sometimes, it, and this has probably nothing to do with it, but it, I don't know if you've ever noticed, when she straddles, she lines her left foot up on her marker most of the time. Now, of course, if there's something in the way or better footing, she'll switch to right. Sure. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, normally, like, her go-to is lining her left it's foot It's kind of creepy that you know that. Well, I'm a straddle putter, so you pay attention That's to shit fair. like that. Fair. But, uh, I, what it, you know, if you're missing to the right... Let me try the yeah, other side. Right, you know, yeah. go put it on your right foot. You know? I, I like that. I, I don't. It's, Train of that's thought. That's very basic and very yeah. you know elementary. True. Eight seventy golf to think something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I was like, eh, maybe she could. You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. she was missing to the right on it. Every one of them, pretty much. Everyone she missed was to the right. So yeah. What if she did, and she even missed further to the right? And just threw <laughs> her like, way the fuck off. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> go back left. No, yeah. That's, I, I get what you're saying. It's a very basic train of thought, but yeah, yeah, maybe try that out. But she, it was that, like I said, down the finish. I'm not gonna go into it too much, but she kind of blew. Well, she did. She, she 100 definitely blew. Did. Her and Missy both lay up with their second shots. Yes, they're right there at the the corner or edge of the fairway. Both of them got chip shots. If <clears throat> if you if I was to ask you or tell you a situation where Missy Gannon and KT had, they had to throw four hands. <laughs> Whose shot would be better? Yeah, definitely KT. 99% uh, of the time you're going to say KT. Yeah. You, you never see Missy throw a forehand. No. Ever. No, not really. And 
that's not what happened. No. Nancy put it up. She and yanked she, it. Yeah. That's funny. I actually just now remember that's exactly what Proctor did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He yanked his upshot yeah. and went OB. Yep. Going into the green on 18. Yep, sure did. Wow. He just had a few strokes to play with. We'll Holy get to shit. that, though. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Missy pulls it off, gets the win. And what's her top three there? We got Kristen Tatar, second place. Good finish, Kristen, but I'm sure you could tell too that was she was just not super stoked. Afterwards, when they did the points, uh, when they interviewed her for the points thing, she was very like, eh, you could tell she just she was not happy with her finish. I'm pretty sure she it, let it get away from and her. I, and I posted it, but I'm pretty sure she did not want to jump in that pond. That's um, why she lost. I think, you think she, she threw she it? it on purpose. Yeah. She's like, fuck this. Yeah. I'm not jumping in that nasty ass pond. Yeah, Look no, at she... me. I'm beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like she'll melt if she got in it. <laughs> yeah. Estonians can't get in ponds. They, yeah. Unless they're ice cold. Uh, yeah. Crystal clear water. Exactly. Uh, Own Scoggins, third place. So I was, you know, I was kind of rooting for Own there early, even though she was never really that far in contention. Yeah. Until like the last round or two, she started pulling, but. Here's your top three right there. Yeah, um, I was joking with Bergnard about, and he made a clip of it. I was like, if if Kristen wins, the, her coming out of the water, is this going to be spectacular? <laughs> it's going to be like Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, everybody's just going to be like, oh, my God. But, she comes uh, out in a bathing suit. I'm like, what? <laughs> Jumps in fully clothed, comes back out in a red bathing suit. Yeah. We're watching it live, but it's slow motion. We're like, how the fuck did they Shaking do Shaking her head and shit, water flying off. Yeah. She comes out and does the whole back thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, Steve that's... Dodge has his glasses pulled down like, whoa. <laughs> Uh, that that would have been great but you know what i came also to the conclusion is i think i like the slip and slide better than the fucking pond jump really yeah at least it's more fun yeah obviously more fun that pond they did not want to do that no no no, no, neither one of them wanted to jump in that nasty fucking pond no that's one of those things that they uh, the commentators kept talking about it too it's like you gotta jump in the pond and I, (laughs) i was thinking to myself like what if you really, really didn't want to? Like, what if, what if you couldn't swim, or you know, like, what if you had reservations about getting in that gross fucking pond? It's man, it was not clean. But yeah. because of tradition, yeah. you're expected to like a slip and slide with a little bit of Diddy's baby oil, <laughs> dude. That'd be fun as fuck. It would be fun. That's the how. That's how it should be. Honestly. It really yeah. something more fun like that. Yeah, slip and slide is better. It's greater than fucking. Pond jump. Pond jump. I agree with I that. know pond jump's tradition. Been around longer. Yeah. But slip and slide. And it's only because some asshole that won the tournament did it. Was drunk. Probably back in, they were probably <laughs> hammered back in the 80s or something. <laughs> I don't remember what year it was, but yeah, he was the guy that started the tradition. And I was yeah, like, nah, it is. And there's cool, probably a lot of players that hate that guy. It is a cool tradition, but that pond was very low and very it didn't look good didn't look clean it looked like a fucking pond yeah seemed like you get hepatitis in that motherfucker absolutely <laughs> i don't I, know if you can get hepatitis from pod water i don't know but, but you can get bit by a snapping a turtle staph infection for sure definitely let's talk about all the health <laughs> the negative health effects from ponds all right top four in points after all all said and done so when it comes down to the championship these this is be, be your top four this will be your lead card it's going to be Owen Scoggins in fourth, KT in third, Holland Hanley in second, and then Missy Gannon in first. So yeah. that'll be your lead card at the DGPT Championship at uh, okay. Nightmare Nevin. Yes, which I plan on playing the week before. Yeah, the week beforehand, I hope. Yeah, the, the week of, of USDGC. The week of USDGC, I hope to play. Um, Interesting. Yep. Let me go through MPO top three real fast, or are you going to go through... No, yeah, We're Dude, no, MPO is fine. Yeah, go ahead. James Proctor, of course. I um, we were texting in our group chat with a buddy who's a huge uh, Proctor fan. Shout yeah. out Josh McCulley, and he was like, "Yeah, Proctor's gonna take this one." And he said something to that effect, and I'm like, "That's a pop dream, dude." <laughs> you got Ricky chasing. I was I was rooting for Rick. Yeah. Plus Gannon Burr. I figured one of those two. And uh, James Proctor impressed the fuck out of me. You know, it's not like we don't ever see him play well. No, or he's. Yeah, he's but solid. It, that rem, uh, reminded me how good of a fucking putter he was, yeah. for sure. Ridiculous. That yeah. clutch putt on 18. It was, yeah. And it, it, we'll break down <sighs> the scenario for you real quick. I'm sure everybody knows. But um, he goes into the 18th of the lead. 
really just has to he, a par wins. I mean, yeah. a par a par wins, and he flubs his upshot onto the island, ends up going to the drop zone. I think the drop zone. I've heard different things. We, I think we've agreed that it was probably like fifty five foot, right? Is that what we came to? I think so. Yeah. Um. And he and it's between a tree. Like it's a nasty, nasty, nasty yeah. putt, and drains it to win the MVP Open. It was for so, bogey. Fucking crazy. For bogey, and I was hoping that he would miss and force the playoff with Paul McBeth, who was in second place, yeah. waiting from third card. Oh, yeah. Paul was chomping at the fucking bits. Yes, dude. You know it. And if he would I was ready to see that. If that would have happened and Paul would have won, he would have been the first third card winner at a DGPT. Okay. Wow. Yep. Interesting. Yep. But Shut yeah, off. he was he was chomping. He was all smiles. He was he was ready to go, baby. I would have loved to have seen it. Although I'm I'm very happy happy for Proctorius. You know, uh, I've always liked him. Every time I spoke to the man, he's fucking so nice. And like he I'm very happy, but man, would it have been cool to see P. McBeach I know. and Proctor. Or at least the playoff. And then yeah. even if Proctor won, just the just the tension. It, it wasn't just the the damn sudden death playoff either. It was the they play Aggregate one now. and yeah. eighteen, and then it goes to sudden death if there's not a winner. Yeah. So that would have been that have been awesome. That would have been the only thing that would have made that tournament my favorite. Uh, well, it was already my favorite tournament of the year. It would have made it a little better. But it would have made it just that much more. Just icing I on don't, the cake. Would it though? I mean, him draining that putt was fucking. It was very a very clutch. Moment. That's one of the biggest shots in disc golf. Yeah, I mean that was. It will be. That was historic. so awesome. That was that was just a that was just. I, I don't know. It gave me goosebumps. Like, yeah. You know, it, I don't know. This, I ha, I do pull for other players more than others. You know what I mean? I don't know if I've been thinking. Like, I'm not sure if I have a favorite. Yeah. But if there's gonna be a, a Proctor, or a Matty O, or somebody up there that's not Gannon Burr hating, and I said I've said this like I'm not hating. I think Gannon Burr might be the best we've ever seen. I'm a fan of him. He wins but too like, much. <laughs> like. The chance for like Proctor to win the MVP Open, yes, give me all that I can sure. fucking get, dude. Sure. Yes, that's fucking. It was it was just so fun. Yeah, yeah. A, a unique winner. Yeah, right? yeah. Someone who's not usually he balled out, dude. He did. I mean, absolutely clutch performance. Jump back to FPL real fast. Mm-hmm. I, I was I meant, wanted to mention this. Missy's putt on seventeen. That was. Clutch that won her the turn. Oh yeah, she that had was from like thirty it. right outside the circle, right inside. Yeah, downhill. Yes. Like yes. it was, if she missed it, it was a gone. Yeah, we saw a lot of people miss. Yeah, that, but. Paige Pierce. It yeah. kind of blowed her around out. But uh, yeah, that just I just wanted to touch on that because I forgot to say it. But yeah, Missy Spud on seventeen. That was clutch as fuck too. Absolutely, that was nasty. Yeah, that meant a lot. And it was an uh, dude. She has those wobbly putts. Yeah, <laughs> those uglier looking putts, <laughs> almost like an own Scoggins yeah. and. It scared me at first. I was like, ah. oh, it's in. <laughs> um, second place, Paul McBeth, of course. Team McBeach. What like a, I said, I was. What a last round, dude. It was. What 11, a weekend. I mean, yeah. it's a good weekend. It was a, it was a good weekend. It, I watched him play a lot. I, I guess I watched him play the first two rounds. Yeah. Because he was on feature. Second card round, and, he didn't play well. But. No, no. And then the third round was pretty lackluster. But yeah. that's where, uh, I mean. He showed us that he's there. He's this is his fourth second place, um, his first second place uh, placing this yeah. year, this season. He's so. six, he's six in points, so okay, he's up there. So he's had a, he's had a good year. I mean, not what not he Paul wants. McBeth's year. Yeah, I mean, not what we're used to of the old Paul. But guess what? It's he's getting older. He's got a kid. He is. He's. I mean, there's a lot of shit going on, but he's still got it in him, dude. It's making. It's making me wonder. <laughs> it's like, okay, are we about to actually see the thing? Like the thing, because you know, you almost want to say, okay, maybe this is the end of Paul. Yeah. Maybe his his he's done. He's fucking washed up. But then you see him pull some shit out like that, and you're like, okay, if he can just do that, like two or three rounds. Yeah. Then he's he's in it because he has to play. I remember texting you after the first round when he made it on. He was on lead card with Gannon Burr. Then it, oh, that lead card the second day was so awesome. I was so stoked that to watch it. That was a nasty it. lead. Yeah, yeah, Ricky, Paul, uh, Gannon Burr, and whoever the fuck else. I forget. <laughs> I really forgot who it was. The other guy didn't matter. <laughs> I was just excited about seeing how those three were doing. And um, I don't know. I, I, but I remember texting you and I was like, he's going to have to play – 
like the old Paul. Yeah. It's, he's going to want to keep up with Gannon, which Gannon kind of took a shit, but. Well, he did the fourth round. Yeah, definitely. He did on Sunday. He played like the old Paul. Uh, yes. Third place, Gavin Babcock. Yeah. Uh, it almost felt like sneakily got in there third place but i mean i was watching a lot of uh cover or a lot of highlights and stuff from him and you know they were going back and forth to his card and it was one of those that was kind of sneakily kicking ass yeah like, oh. yeah he had the weekend. it was ezra was the last one on that card you were talking about i'm pretty sure uh yes it was <laughs> absolutely uh robinson yeah uh by the way that was gavin babcock tied with gannon and aaron and wasaki for third yeah four-way tie down there so close. That's Ricky or Paul. That's who I was going for. Yeah, the old guard. The old guard, dude. Yeah, you want to see it? I, I didn't. I didn't. I want Ricky to win one. I want Paul to man. Ricky's already won one this year, and if Paul don't win one, this is going to be the first year since what 2011 that he hasn't won yeah. a series event or a major or you know. Yeah. So he's got one more chance. USDGC. I'm not sure if they consider the DGPT championship and uh, an elite series. I'm not sure if that would be considered since it's not a full, uh, full you know, tournament like it's just the top 32. No, I don't. Know. So I don't know. I don't know if they would consider that. I would. I would think they they would, but you know what I mean. It's different rules. Right. I mean, people are starting with different strokes and everything else. So, and yeah. if I mean, it, I know sixth place ain't bad. So he's not. Fighting back from as many strokes as what any people below him are, he's going to have a you know lead on some people. But given gaining any strokes, just seems like a oh, terrible yeah. fucking news. Absolutely, <laughs> and every good. everybody is going to be giving gaining strokes. So, yeah. but Nevin's a bitch, dude. Nevin's a whole different beast. So. Oh yeah, there could uh, there could be some serious swings on some of those yeah, holes for sure. Know? Yeah, one bad tree kick. Yep. Um. Which reminded me, I went and took screenshots of all Paul's posts. I remember talking about it last week. So this is him commenting on the MVP Open. Second place at MVP Open. I'm really feeling my game right now. We're getting close to gold. So it's like every post. <laughs> He's getting closer, baby. Yeah, every post round uh, post that he makes is always like, I feel like I've unlocked something with my putting, ready to carry this into the next three events. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's just like we're getting there. Whereas it used to be excuses, Paul. Yeah. You know, Paul yeah. used to be much more like, I cut my finger and... It's healing, and I don't know if I can. I needed a wipe. My vag is bleeding. Oh yeah. no, that's not Paul. That's somebody else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But you know, like I don't know what I was getting at with that. But he's Paul, more positive. He's it's he's, seeming he, like he's more positive. Maybe in a different. He's headspace. on the up. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm. I think USDGC is a tough like course. It seems like if anything that Paul's lacking now is maybe just a little bit of accuracy, and with all the manufactured ob and just all the ob at usdgc it's not the place you want to not be accurate right you know what i mean so but he's paul Macbeth. i would never count him out especially after that last round i mean he's so close to gold like he says yep we'll see if he can turn it on for you know three to four rounds uh the your your lead card at the dgp championship would be your point standing so it would be Fourth place was Calvin Heimberg. Third place was the Boy Scout, Nicholas Antilla. Mm-hmm. And then second, Ricky. And yeah. then, of course, first place, Gettin' yes. And nobody was even really close to gaining. Like, Ricky was the closest. And mm-hmm. then Ricky was a hundred and no, 270 points ahead of Nicholas. Holy shit. Yeah, so... What a big drop off! Yeah, from second to third, and then at the bottom of the the last ones in on the MPO are Emerson, Keith, Corey Ellis, and Vino. Yeah, that's your it. last three in. So first ones out: Luke Humphreys, Bradley yeah. Williams, and Ezra. Yeah, Adderall. that's tough. Yeah, yeah. I was I was paying attention to that. I wonder how nerve wracking that is as a pro to uh, for that to be a story like a storyline on while you're watching coverage. It's just like, come on, why you got to show my fucking eight over <laughs> scorecard? Yeah, well, I mean, it probably is. But also, dude, you know, if you make the championship, it's guaranteed payday. Everybody gets paid. Okay. So that's 
probably a huge, you know what I mean? Absolutely. But yeah, th- this is the first year where I thought they did a really good job of tracking the points during coverage. Because, I mean, they were going back and forth, yeah. especially with FPO with yeah, Hannah Wynn. Hannah Wynn. Yeah. But uh, they did it with the MPO too, but not as much because I don't think it was as much of, it wasn't as tight, you right. know. But um, I thought it made it more interesting, you know what I mean? I mean even, I was checking the scores of, some of the people that weren't in the top 10. Right. I was like, oh, shit, you know. Yeah, it is something else to pay attention to. Another uh, another interesting part, like you don't have to just do who's winning this tournament. Yeah, yeah. Who's but, fighting for points. I thought, I thought they did the coverage did well of keeping everybody in that. I, I thought they did. Yeah. On the FBO side, the last one's in, or Hannah Huynh, which mm-hmm. she beat uh, Eliezer by less than a fucking point. Less than a single point, like point seven five. Wow. Um, and then Lisa Fajakis and Emily <laughs> Emily Weatherman. That's your last three in. <sighs> so close. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Missy ended up. I think she was in second until until MVP. Oh, okay. I th- I'm pretty sure that uh, Holland was leading. Right. Yeah, until, she was. Yeah. She was. Yeah. So that win actually gave Missy the the championship. No shit. That's huge for her. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. To win that and also win just by the skin of mm-hmm. your teeth yep. from that uh, round, or tournament, rather. Uh, you want to do winners and losers? Do winners and losers, baby. Winners this week. Uh, MVP Open. We already yeah. talked about it before. It's the best tournament of the year. Best tournament of the year. I'm calling it. I will never sway from it. Until well, I, I'll sway from it. Yeah, I'm sure we're gonna watch another one. They could start with Vegas next year, and I'll be like, Vegas is my favorite fucking tournament. <laughs> only because it's the first. Yeah, only because it's the first tournament of the year. Yeah, no, but I mean, I guess we'll be cranking it up back down in Florida next year, yeah. which is gonna be awesome. Yeah. So they they are playing again back in Olympus. I need yeah. to go back over that. I'm pretty sure. List. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Matty O. Yep. Dude, that was nasty. That was the ace. That was 14? nasty. Come on. And the view from the back. Who was it that recorded that? I um, don't know. Probably a bunch of folks. No, no, no. It was a it was a player that was on this card. It was a oh shoot, the Canadian. Big germ. No, Canadian. Thomas Gilbert. Thomas Gilbert. Okay. Yeah, he's the one that recorded it. Great, great shot. Yeah. In this seeing Matteo give the the you know this his, his the way he celebrates. Do his football calls. Yeah, dude, you know? that was. What a nasty ace! Like it, it was. was, and it was got five hundred bucks too. It would uh, air bumped, yeah, up perfectly. Yeah. Like it went, it went exactly where it needed to be. I'm not saying he wouldn't have made it, but he it wouldn't have aced without that air bump. No, but no, probably not. But that's sure. that's disc golf, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's disc golf. What an ace, though. That it is cool awesome. to think about that, or like see a disc go in off a of tree kick or something. Yeah. And you're like, oh wow, that that had no chance. Yeah, that was that. And then another ace that nobody got footage of, and I don't understand how the fuck Paige Pierce is on a mm-hmm. horse on an aceable hole, and nobody has her fucking camera out. Yeah. Which she, I mean, she wasn't on the lead card. I think she might have been third card, or but no. I mean, she wasn't. She wasn't that far off that nobody was recording her ace on fifteen, <laughs> and that that blows my mind that there's not there's there's cameras and you can't do shit without being on camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How the hell did nobody record no that fucking it. hole? I don't know. The camera guy was pissing at the time. <laughs> had his camera shut off. But uh, yeah, it's but in Paige winner. I mean, just a good weekend. I it mean, was. she hole seventeen, eighteen got her on that last round. Yes, but seventeen got a lot of people, but more on the FPO side. It seemed like the the seventeen was biting some people in the ass, which made Missy's putt even bigger. Yeah. You know, on that hole for sure. But yeah, it was a. Uh, 17, 18 got her, but good weekend by Paige. It was you know, gra- we love PP. We do. We love her. I PP fucking here. love PP. We do. Um, I was, it was also another one I was kind of rooting for as well. When she, uh, when they first teed off the final round, she's like, you're going to want to follow the chase cars. <laughs> and then almost she puts it OB. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, Paige, <laughs> chill out. But then she proceeded she, to put together a fucking great round. She Ended up being five under, but it could have been, you know, seven. She could have got oh, seven under. She, oh, those easily. last two holes yeah. got her. No, she could have been eight. <laughs> You know yeah. what I mean? But, yeah, she she blew up on the last two holes. She but did. She played a great round. Yeah. I mean, it was a good round. That's all. It was a great round. That's all I got to say about that, boy. Yeah. I mean, she played her heart out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Old PP's almost back. I mean, she is, you know, coming back. She broke her fucking ankle. 
Yeah, she sn- not just snapped broke it, it. Snapped it. Yeah, you know, like and, pretty sure bones were out and shit. And I don't know. Did she take? Was it a whole year off? Damn near. Yeah, I mean, because it happened in European that European stretch. So most of it. Yeah, See, I could never, I could never look at a player that's coming back from a an injury like that and be like, oh man, they're they're fucked. They're, they don't have it anymore. <laughs> it's like I don't know what it's like. I've never broken anything. Nothing. No. God damn. I, you I, used I drink to a skateboard. lot. Of, I used to drink a lot of milk. <laughs> Milk. How do you not Strong break bones? anything skateboard? Because I'm really a pussy. Because <laughs> I'm no good. I mean, I wasn't like going downstairs and shit. Uh, I was always like a little frumpy, chubby kid. So I was just doing like little flat ground tricks. <laughs> Anyways, I never, I, I never broke anything. But I'll never talk shit about somebody who uh, maybe isn't performing that well after an injury like that. Because like, how long does it take? I don't for know. you to re- recoup right. back to where to normal. I don't know with this golf, but which before the injury she was playing some lackluster golf. She was, yeah, she wasn't playing. She wasn't playing super. Yeah, well. she wasn't playing. It almost felt like she lost the, the passion. Drive. Ooh, drive too. That uh, both both drivers. Yeah, that's true. It's nice passion and well fairway and drive. Huh. <laughs> come on, man. It's not split hairs. <laughs> yeah, come on, dude. You're split Get hairs. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I'm 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 hoping PP can come back next year maybe even the remainder of the season and you, you know win throw pink or something yeah that'd... oh yeah it is throw pink. it'll be throw pink for them yeah they did theirs way back yeah that's still i don't understand that but anyway i don't know yeah we talked about that that one time they could <laughs> let's just usdgc be usdgc yeah and uswdgc yeah there's no reason but let them have their weekend though that's good oh yeah that's what yeah that's yeah what... let them have their weekend that way they ain't gotta yeah, we care about us. Yeah, well, I honestly enjoy watching FBO just as much as him. Meh. No, you don't. Never mind. Quit lying. <laughs> You're not winning any brownie points saying that to me, bud. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, but it's close. Like I said, that last round, uh, Sunday, watching Maple Hill was some it of the most exciting, exciting yeah. fucking shit. Yeah, it really, it really was. was. Yeah. It's just Maple Hill. Yeah. What a fucking Male thing. or female. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> don't matter. <laughs> don't matter. Um, losers. Losers. There was one big loser out of the whole <laughs> the whole weekend. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the Boy Scout leader <laughs> trying to wrangle Nicholas Antala he, he tried to from get the drop him, zone. He, he tried to damn get him a cute little boy. Yeah. Fucking grabbed a hold of fucking Nicholas. Yeah. He didn't like it. No, no. Pissed him off. No, he was there like get the fuck off of me. Yeah. Nicholas kind of did the jerk. Did like the. Uh. It's so funny that I Nicholas looks so young. Yeah, that that dude thought that it was one of his Boy Scouts. Absolutely, <laughs> like he legit he thought, thought it was, was his Boy Scout. Yeah, Nicholas, like get off of me. <laughs> <laughs> I am a man. <laughs> I'm no boy. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he African? <laughs> I don't know. It's only accent I can do. <laughs> I do African and this. That's all you get. <laughs> Redneck. Uh, yeah, but the good the good part about the whole situation is Nicholas has earned his nickname, and it's the Boy Scout. The Boy Scout. Yeah, yeah, he is forever known as the Boy Scout from For here sure. on out. I mean, picture him the way he is with the Boy Scout tie on <laughs> and like a whatever brown button up shirt, whatever color they wear, yeah. and a fuck ton of disc golf badge. Yeah, but a really good one. Oh, yeah. He's an he's Eagle like a, Scout when it comes to disc Absolutely. Golf. Yeah. yeah. He's that's that's Eagle Wigs. Yeah. Scout. Eagle Wigs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was definitely, uh, that was funny as shit. Yeah. And I bet it free like, first off, the dude stood up on the tee in front of Nicholas. Yeah. Like, and he was, it was the drop zone on eight is where, where it all happened. I'm sure I've seen it, but drop zone on eight is a putt downhill back towards the water and it's got a little tee pad drop zone. Yeah. Dude stands up in, on the tee pad in front of Nicholas and then steps off and grabs his arm and is like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear somebody being like, can you get your hands off the player or whatever yeah. do not touch the players and that guy's like oh shit i could have sworn that was a child i mean you know that was the big loser honest mistake yeah but besides that there's not many losers over this weekend i mean no um, except for the disc golf courses that got hammered we i hate to hear that yeah they were that, that that may be one of the biggest losers yeah some um which i actually saw where uh usdgc posted that uh winthrop had a few holes that were fucked oh really a lot of trees down over there so but they said it should be cleaned up they got a couple of weeks taken care of yeah. yeah so that's good so it should be fine that's good um i would argue that ricky is a loser wow i don't like he it. needs to win dude 
He needs to win. Yeah. And he's gotten too close this season. He's got to win, though. He's gotten he's so got, fucking close. He's got a one win, and he's second in points. Okay, I was about to ask, how? what did he... I don't even remember what he won this year. It doesn't matter. He won. It, yeah, it doesn't matter. It, we No one really remembers the thing he won. That's why. He needs the fucking win. He needs this win. He wants it. It would have meant something. Once again, the most competitive guy out there. He's Absolutely. into it. He gets those eyes, dude. Like, I, I don't know if he's fucking high or just zoned in or it's the limes. Or both. Or all three. I don't know. Like, sometimes his eyes just look like he's fucking too focused. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, chill the fuck out. He definitely, I know we've talked about it before, he definitely has, like, Adderall energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for sure. Adderall college kid energy. Yeah. He's very like, whoa, let's go. I, I, Those claps, dude. Yeah. yeah so piercing. He claps loud. He claps sure. loud as fuck. And it, but I love the way he always gives the crowd love. Yeah, yeah, for you sure. You know, it's it, it and it's always it is it one person that's just always on tour, or is it a thing now? The let's go, Rick. You hear it. Yeah, you do. It can't be one person. No, no, I'm sure it's not. But There's mean, not just one guy the, that follows the Let's into Go every Rick event. is fucking it's popular, dude. Yeah, let's yeah. go, Rick. Let's go, Rick. I mean you hear it every what about, fucking hole. What about Aaron Gossage's fucking honker? Goose. Goo. Is it goo? That's what yeah, it is. Goose. Speaking of Gossage, I don't want to call him a loser mm. because I don't want to put him in the loser bracket. Okay. Because he's got a lot of potential. This man has to get out of his own motherfucking head. Yeah. He is, though, I mean, <laughs> I'm a negative self-talker. I'm a, I'm bad at it. Uh, I think a lot of people are. But, man, he is bad. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah, you can tell it definitely affects him yeah. whenever he's missing shots. Because, I mean, he's vocal. Yeah. yeah. You can <laughs> yeah, hear him. <laughs> yeah, he, you can tell. Come on, man. <laughs> Real Fuck fucking it. good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you because it, you have to imagine most of those mistakes are mental. I mean, off the tee, maybe not so much, but definitely on the putting green. Yeah. You know, which he was putting okay. Yeah, he putted well. He, he, he was putting okay. He missed a few here and there. I but. just, I hate it because he seems like it's like a cool guy. I mean, I guess all these motherfuckers seem cool. We don't know him, but boy, he is, he fucking, he's hard on him. God, I hate to see anybody hard on themselves like that. Yeah. Maybe it's because I am. Because you can relate. Yeah. And yeah. you know what I mean? I don't, he don't, he's still young. He can get out of that. Yeah. You don't want to be my age and still fucking hate yourself. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it fucking sucks. Yeah. It's but, like it's like if you smoke for a long time, it's harder to quit smoking yeah, the, more, the yeah. longer you smoke. Quit hating yourself now, Goose. Yeah. Start loving yourself. You won't get lung cancer. Appreciate every fucking thing. Yeah. Like, sit back and be like, hey, that wasn't a bad throw. That was a yeah. fucking bad tree. I don't know. <laughs> I fucking, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, be delusional about but, it. But, I mean... It, even when he's playing well, he seems like he's really hard on himself, which I think that's also a line of a champion. Like, yeah, you know, for sure. I think that makes people better. You know what I mean? When they ex when you expect, you know, perfection, sometimes it helps you. You well, know what I mean? I guess it's the difference between somebody who can let uh, negative things during their round affect them in a like for the worse. Yeah. And there's people that can use that as power to like push forward and fuck. Yeah. Up succeed and it doesn't seem like it sits on him because like on 15 i think it was he hit an early tree and that was one of the big like yeah like verbal fucking yes. self negative self-talking that he, he was like he might even said real fucking good or right. real good or whatever but i mean it was very it was right there on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he went up to his next shot and threw a turnover forehand, which was scrambles. fucking ridiculous. One of the best scrambles of the tournament. Yeah, so, I mean, it, obviously, he he can, you know, it's one snap at a time or one throw at a time with him. He can get over it pretty fast. I just, you know, not to say I'm fucking pussy or nothing. I just hate people hating on themselves like that. Sure, you know? sure. I get that. Um, it's got to be a little bit. It's got to be a little detrimental, too. I mean. Yeah. I'm sure it does, but like I said, I think some people are kind of hard on themselves. Like, I imagine like Ricky's probably pretty hard on himself, oh, yeah, for right? Sure, yeah. But he can just like grind it out, and it's almost like it doesn't really fuck with him. Yeah, you know, like he's not missing those putts. Like it's almost like, oh, he's not missing that twice. Yeah, like, yeah. Dude, do you not know? I mean, when Ricky steps up to a 55 footer, mm -hmm. there's this something you know 
<laughs> you know before he ever puts it, dude, that this motherfucker, it's going in. He went out of bounds on hole eight, and then as soon as he got up to the drop zone, I pulled my phone out to record it to send to my buddy because I knew, I was like, he's you, probably going to make it. Yeah. He does it every year. Yeah. Every year he'll go out of bounds one of the, or two of the rounds, whatever, and then he'll go and drain it from the drop zone. Mm-hmm. And he fucking knows. Yeah. Like, of, of, course, of course he did. You know it, dude. It's yeah. like it, you can, it's like it's body language or something. Like, and he doesn't make every one of them. But whenever he walks up to like a 55, 60 footer, it's something you can read about Ricky that you know that it's fucking going in. Sure. Like there's no doubt in my mind sometimes. I'm like, oh, he's fucking. Yeah, he's got this. 60 foot, that ain't shit. Yeah. He's got that. And that's crazy to say about anybody. Yeah. Gannon Burr is also one of those players where I'm like, oh, if he can see the basket, it might go. Yeah, there's a chance. Yeah. He's such a good putter. And it's uh, it's crazy. I don't think I might have talked to you about it. It's like. They're getting so, disc golfers are getting so good that whenever they're 50 foot, I mean, there's certain one people out there that you, you ex, you're expecting them to make it now. And Gannon's one of them. Like, yeah, that's crazy. If it's within 50 foot, like, you expect Gannon to make it. You yeah. expect Ricky to make it. And yeah. that's Isaac, Isaac Robinson. Isaac Robinson. Almost, yeah. Ezra Robinson. Ezra, I yeah. mean, a lot of, that's what I'm saying. A lot of Other them. Other Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them like you just you expect them to make 50 footers and they do dude, it's I'm not gonna crazy lie. when own scoggins can see yeah, the basket i'm absolutely. like hey this could definitely yeah. go in she's a better putter than a lot of the people oh, yeah. males a lot uh, of the mpo guys absolutely know. i mean there's just it's it's ridiculous how good disc golfers are because <laughs> i don't make one out of 10 from 50 probably no 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 no, no. and you know another thing one out of 20 maybe. While, while i'm thinking about this Okay, people like, yeah, they're pro. It's hard to imagine how good, and if you've never been to a DGPT event or seen a pro play live or something, it's hard to imagine how good these fuckers are. But I figured out something. If you're an 850 golfer, which I, you know, there's a lot of 850 golfers out there. I'm 870 something. Now, just imagine how good, compared to you, how good a 950 golfer is. Right. They're a fucking really better, good. Yes. Now imagine somebody that's 100 points better than them <laughs> motherfuckers. Yeah. That's how good these people yeah. are. You know what I mean? It, they're so fucking good, it's ridiculous. It's kind of hard to put into perspective. It really is. I think that's like a... That's why I'd like to play some of these tracks that these guys are playing mm-hmm. from the pro, uh, like Peace. the pro layout. Layout, the like old layouts. Yeah, just to see where I stack up. Yeah, no, you don't. Unless it, just, <laughs> no, if you want to see a lot of positive this or positive that numbers, then yeah, you can. But. No, I would, I, I definitely would. But I mean, you can kind of figure if you know ten fifty golfer what they're shooting there, and you being nine oh five or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can kind of figure not figure long. it out. Yes, it's not going to be pretty, but it it would be. It yeah. would make you just you, go what you shot now minus fifteen. <laughs> I mean, but it would make you appreciate what they do more for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And uh, I encourage everybody to do that. Yeah. If you think you're hot shit at playing, go disc for golf, it. Yeah. Yeah. Go play some of the pro tees, man. Yeah. See play, how you stack up. Play some hot, hard courses. That's the thing too. Is like, I, disc golf has made it where like everybody wants to shoot under par. Under par is good, yeah. right? Like, and that's the standard kind of for a lot of courses. Maybe not for everybody who plays. Some people and not play some courses, par. you know. Yes, for sure. But like compared to golf, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So like, I don't like playing courses that are really hard. Where like, you know, the Corbett is down in Chattanooga, for instance, where like ten over, nine over is a nine hundred rated round. Yeah. Because even like, even if I feel like I played really well, I'm gonna be like plus ten. Yeah. <laughs> 64? Yeah. So, and that's <laughs> or whatever. A, that's, yeah. a, that's a conversation that we've had about how, like, you you don't, like, you go by, Paul, like, birdie. You yeah. want you want to get birdies. And to me, I'm just like, I don't care about the birdies. Yes. I want that final, the final score is more important sure. to me. Like, sure. par is irrelevant. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're playing against somebody else. But you, those birdies do something for you yes. more than they do for yeah, me. Yeah, I, I love think. a good hole that's like uh, that makes sense, like, yeah. or like a, to par, like you know, a par. A, like I hate playing like stupid three hundred foot par fours. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, that's a birdie, but it doesn't feel doesn't good. Feel right, yeah. You know, it's like it's yeah. a three's a three, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I know what you're saying. 
Whatevs. What do you do? Um, what else we got? Oh, DGPT is going to be testing baskets uh, the week after USDGC. So I got it here. Disc Golf Pro Tour will host an initial equipment testing session on Monday, October 14th and Tuesday, October 15th at Nevin Disc Golf Course in Charlotte, North Carolina, ahead of the 2024 DGPT Championship presented by Bar- Barbasol. The purpose of this preliminary testing session is to practice and refine a series of evaluation protocols that the DGPT will implement as a part of the future update to its list of baskets approved for use on tour. So it's like a pre-testing. They're testing, they're testing. Yes. This is what they're doing. Exactly. They're going to they're gonna do some testing, and then they're going to see if they need to change anything about the testing. Yes. But also, they're going to test what baskets they have during this testing. Which is weird, right? Because they they did say something about if somebody, if a company goes ahead and gets them a basket for the Mm pre-testing, that they don't have to do it again. Yes, they won't have to do it again in um, early next season. So, but what if they change the, they don't like the way the test is now and they change it, shouldn't they have to put their basket through the new? Maybe that's not right. See, I heard the same thing. I, I did yeah. hear. I heard something like that too. So, but uh, regardless, I think it's a good thing. Is are all the baskets still going to make the cut? Yeah. If they come back after the testing, let's let's talk about next year. Um, when they test the the real test, the final test, or whatever. Say Prodigy. <laughs> Just because. <laughs> say they test them. And they're My like, Prodigy. Yeah. So they test them, and they don't make the cut. Are they going to give Prodigy a list and say, hey, if you want to use our that, baskets, yes. you've got to fix this? Yes, I believe so. I believe okay. that will be what, what they're going to do is they kind of make – and they need to figure out what exactly – I don't know what exactly the guidelines for a good basket are, right? Like they're going to ha- – and the way they're going to test too is they're going to have some tour card holders, players, putting from various positions, uh, distances, angles going into the basket. And then making making a call from there, which I don't know, it's kind of vague, but okay. Here's a, here's a. They need to have Gannon Burr, ju- the yes. only one. <laughs> I don't know. They else. need somebody at those soft sure, too. Loftier putters. Yeah, for sure. They need Gannon and Paul Paul Ulibar. There you go. That's like, that's all they need. Or like a Barsby. Yeah. Oh yeah, a Barsby. Yeah. Um, I wonder if say Prodigy Basket doesn't make the cut. <laughs> Will Prodigy spend the money to sponsor tournaments? Like, if they can't use their baskets, will they be right. like, all right, well, we, we're just sponsor? not going to, yeah, we just won't be a title sponsor. Hmm. I wonder. Like, That's a good point. is that big en- a big enough deal to them, or does it matter? I bet it, you would think it would be, yep. but also, I don't know, man. I don't know how Prodigy's doing right now. So they may just be like, yeah, whatever, basket, smash it. We need to get our fucking name on it and <laughs> yeah. make money here. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, I wonder also, is this the first step to having um, one certain basket that goes on tour? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I don't think anyone, as long as we they could come to like a overall agreement as to what basket that is, yeah. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. As a uh, the players, the players. No, I don't think players would either. I think I think it would benefit. Except for them the few people that are like, oh, I like discatchers more yeah. than you know. Yeah. MVP. But we all know stars. that you have to put put certain ways on certain baskets, so at least yeah. it would be a standard yes thing all season. But also, adjusting your putt to different baskets is a skill, just yes. like distance, right? I mean, everybody talks about how you know only bombers can play these holes or whatever. Well, guess what? Throwing it far is a skill. Yeah. It's took them people long enough. Putting with touch is a skill. Putting hard is a skill. You know what I mean? So It is. It uh, it makes... Variety is the spice of life. It really is. And uh, I enjoy a little variety every once in a while. Except for Prodigy Baskets. Yeah, Prodigy Baskets <laughs> can fuck right <laughs> off. No one likes them. No, they suck. No one... Even the people that I've heard make the argument as to why they're okay... It's always like, well, if you putt dead center and well, the strong putt, th- there's no problem. Yeah, it's and it's true. And I'm like, low dead center and strong. So I need saying. to be exactly perfect every time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're not gonna give me something, you know, like a good right side catch that you can get on some other baskets. Like 
that's not okay. It <laughs> has to be fucking right there. You gotta be dead. You gotta be low, center, and hard. God damn. Yeah. That's. But if you do that, you'll make every goddamn one of them, dude. It's not hard. Fair. It's not fucking hard. Because yeah, I've seen a lot of them just being a little too high, and it just like. Oh yeah, for sure. Ha-pah. A high one, a high putt on the Prodigy, especially the T ones, the mm-hmm. first ones. If you put high, it'll hawk two of them motherfuckers right at you. Yeah. I mean, right at you. Yeah. It sucks. It's it does. Suck. Depressing. Yeah. Who was it that had a the hawk to a fucking this weekend? I can't even remember who it was. Oh, it was Goose. Mm. He, uh, He's had that a lot. Over I think it was whole years. eight, maybe. He damn. No, it wasn't whole eight. It wasn't the water hole. It was. It was the one that um, Matty O aced. Fourteen. Oh. 14. Mm-hmm. He fucking, I think that's what hole it was. No, who, who gives a fuck? <laughs> anyway, I'm too, I'm too fucking old and burnt out. Uh, he hit a perfect fucking putt. Yeah. And it fucking, yeah. To you know what would have fixed that? Prodigy baskets. <laughs> it was hard and low and yeah. center. It was good. It would have went in. I don't, I know I've said this, but I don't, I just don't understand why they went with that design and kept it. I don't. I would like to talk to Shoestrick himself. I don't know. I'm not saying he's the one that designed the basket. No, I doubt. But it. I would like to talk to him I mean, and be Shoestrick's like, a man, man "Why of many is this?" Talents, but I don't know if he's a <laughs> basket designer. Yeah, he's making them in his basement too. <laughs> <laughs> but like, how could you look at that and then go put on a chain star and then be like, "These are the same. <laughs> These can't. are the same." Yeah, you can't. You can't, dude. No. But maybe this testing will help. All of the companies mm. provide us disc golfers with a better product because I would think once they changed it for the tour, they would change all their models, top end models that you bought from there on out. I for think sure. maybe not. I might say fuck those AMs. No, dude, AMs is most of the. That's true. AMs are most of the fucking disc golfers. That's true. We'll just have to. Just not buy them if they don't change them. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm interested to see what the what kind of changes are going to be made, if any, really, this season with baskets in regards to baskets. That's like that was such a that's a it's a hot topic. on and off, on and off topic yeah. throughout the season, especially the last couple with Gannon Burr being prominent. Yeah, he's a very big critic of uh, certain baskets. Yeah, and they have to be. Hey, but it's hard to argue That's, with someone who's the best fucking player in the world. It is. People, it is. people give him a lot of shit for be, for being like Critical. opinionated. Yeah. Crit- it's yeah. like he can be, though. He's allowed yeah, to. But man, I, he's not allowed to on his putts. Fucking calm down, big boy. <laughs> you ain't got to throw him that fucking sure. hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He can be critical not, on the courses if he wants to. That doesn't bother me. He can be critical of other things. But whenever you're fine, you're putting that hard and they spit through sometimes yeah. or they go th- get through the chains hit the pole and kick out calm you know settle down but young well, man I want settle the fuck down well I want Gannon to know that his uh, his points are valid and his he points is heard are, yeah so for sure okay yeah <laughs> my bad I hit my microphone take it easy <laughs> um yeah he, well, they're heard for sure they are real quick I would like to uh Give a shout out to Hans over at D Clip. D Clip for getting me this D Grip chalk pocket. Yes, they're sweet, dude. Look at this. No chalk, it's chalk except for on your fingers. Just on the fingers. It's a genius it. product. Dude. It really is. Whenever he first showed me those at World, I was like, I fucking love that. I'm excited to use it. Yeah, it's you don't. It. You're not going to get your win read if you're wanting to get a huge plume. Yeah, if you're wanting to treat a chalk bag like a fucking vape yeah and blow clouds with your chalk bag <laughs> it's not happening no but you're also not wasting chalk so you don't yeah. you don't have it all over you you don't have it all over the people next to you because that's one of the, that's one of the worst things is you're standing next to the tea box waiting to tee off and then somebody gets up there and smacks a super smacks chalky bag. bags and it fucking get, blows back yeah, on you god like god damn man <laughs> It's fucking awful. It's like they emptied uh, their grandpa's ashes in the windstorm. <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, how about that? For when I die, I want my ashes to be put in a chalk oh, bag and used whoa. by my boys. That's nasty. That's a good idea. That is pretty cool. 
It's so, not, yeah, no, it's that's cool. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our, they'll be dry enough for sure, right? I think. I mean, I, I'll be down Your hands would be like black and shit, like dark. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm down with that. I think that's a great idea. We should start that company doing that. Oh yeah. Fucking That is a good idea. I know uh Dead Man Chalk Bags. <laughs> Dead Man Chalk Bags. There yeah. you go. There's the name. Uh, fucking uh, Ed Hedrick had his uh, ashes put in a frisbee, yeah. you know? Yeah. And Not you can buy some, yeah. Yeah. I I got Ashes to Aces. Ashes to Aces. Yeah. That's good. That's a good one. Damn. Yeah. What do like you think that. of another one? Uh Heiser Ash. <laughs> just just a disc off word and then Ash. Yeah. You can make anything work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Putts and Ash Butts. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. That's dude. it. We had fun. Guys, stay safe. Yes. The storms are over, but anybody out there struggling right now, our thoughts are with you. Yeah, for sure. And uh, any- Like, subscribe, all that other shit. Set notifications, ring a bell. Uh, listen, CVP shop, merch shop. It might only be up for a couple more weeks, and we might be pulling it and going a different route. Um, so if you're wanting to get a CVP shirt, try to get on there next week or two, get your shit. But we will have more merch coming out. We're just going a different route. That's not going to be a print to order. Yeah. It'll be um. Well, we already have them printed, and we'll probably do some pre-orders and whatnot, and have some one-on-ones. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a different thing, but it's gonna be cool. Absolutely. I bought a Singer sewing machine, and I'm gonna be making all the <laughs> garments by hand. And I'm gonna be sewing our logo on everything. Yeah. So, um, you'll have to come here, and we'll have to measure you for each <laughs> each, each article of clothing. It's gonna be tailor fit. Yeah. So it's it'll you look snazzy as fuck. Yes. And it will have CVP on it. Yeah, that's going to cost the armor and a goddamn leg. <laughs> it's, it's extremely expensive. I have to quit my normal job <laughs> just to be able to meet the demand. <laughs> All right, we love y'all. Love you guys. Bye.